everyone. Welcome back to Build Series. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. And today I'm sitting down with Merle Dandridge from the own TV drama Greenleaf. Dandridge is here to talk about season four of the show, which focuses on the Greenleaf family coming together and battling for the soul of their church. But will family secrets take them all down for good? Take a look. Let me welcome Merle Dandridge. <laughs> the drama. I mean. <laughs> that clip perfectly sums up, if you've never seen Greenleaf, how they just pull you in and how just everything is so intertwined and there's every, everything is just so complicated, which makes it so much fun to watch. Right. Yes. And so going into season four, where do we pick up? I mean, hallelujah for a season four. <laughs> yeah, I, that's it, true. So it is a blessing. Yeah. Well, that clip in particular, I just find grace at this turning point in her identity. And when if I look back on everything that she has gone through these past few seasons, and then of course the issues that caused her to leave home and leave Memphis in the first place, it was because if she were really looking deep down, there is a bit of her identity that she did not understand. Because what was that dissonance with her mom about in the first place, you know? That, that was a big question that, that a lot of the, the audience has. So that answered a lot of those questions. So now it's like, okay, so now I know what that thing was for her, you know? And moving forward, she can say, With all, without that baggage on me, what is my calling? What am I supposed to do here? It, rather than it always being from some kind of outside um, stimulus that causes her to, to move, now it's, okay, all of these issues have created these secrets, which you're about to find out about with Grace, and now that those are out, how does she move forward in, in her purpose, owning that, owning which, what uh, the pain that her circumstances have caused her, owning those situations, and then saying, okay, now I, I'm taking care of that. I'm taking care of my business. Now I see clearly what I'm supposed to do. She's taking care of her business, but she is still also so intertwined in the family business, and especially now that she's going to be the interim pastor. I mean, without giving anything away, obviously, um, what do you think her intentions are with taking on that role, you know? Like, how do you think she's gonna move forward? Because she could really stay super loyal to her family or they can use it to maneuver and do other things. Right, well, she has a lot of guilt when it comes to her family. Okay, so all of these things have, have come about. She has, uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen season one, two, and three, catch it on Netflix, but she killed her uncle. <laughs> he deserved it, okay? I mean, he, he was, um, I mean, what I really loved about the Max storyline, though, is that it wasn't just he's the bad guy, he's the villain. In the, in the show, in the context of the show, we really explore the humanity. What creates a predator like that? And, and what are the actual circumstances that, that they are able to lure and, and, um, and pull somebody close? Seduce, exactly. That it, it's not just... I'm I'm a bad guy here I am. He is broken. He would come he came from a brokenness and that perpetuated itself it forward. Anyway, so why is she doing all these things for her family now? Well, it's almost as if she owes it to them a little bit. She's been gone all this time. She's the only green leaf that Harmony and Hope will let into the church and she has had this calling of ministry and preaching on her life since she was a, she was a kid. Uh let me go a step further. I mean, she left her baby sister uh, charity. She left her possibly in the line of fire to a predator. She um, did step over Jacob, her, bro her brother. And she does have a sense of loyalty because Bishop's still her daddy. Bishop's still her daddy. Which was Bishop's still her daddy, okay? Which can I say, just a little sidebar, <laughs> that was such a beautiful part of the, the ending of the last season, of him hearing that and accepting it and it not changing right. anything. Yeah. I thought that was just so profound and- Isn't forgiveness important. powerful? So great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so important for Grace, right. you know, because I think in a lot of times she always sort of felt like people weren't accepting her for who she is and this man is still like, I love you no matter what. It was yes. just so beautiful. I see. see the truth of everything within you and in our circumstance and I love you anyway. Yes. Isn't that something we just want to hear? It, like, doesn't that just make you- <sighs> 
You're saying, though, that she does feel that uh, obligation now to her family, even though they're constantly being like, well, before you came back, everything was fine. I mean, they love you to blame her for right. everything. No, they're always blaming her for something. But were they fine? It, it, no. it required a, um, an uncovering of that infected wound for them to come to the place that they are in now, that they're suddenly coming together, that they have a common purpose, and that they're getting real about where they are. Yeah. I think that's one thing that makes Green Leaf so relatable for so many people is that every family does have secrets mm -hmm. and they can be really insidious and they can go on for decades and it's it affects generation after generation until one person is sort of brave enough to call it what it is. Yeah. Uh, and I think I you can look at Grace and you see a, a lot of bravery in some of the things she does as well. That's right. She brave. <laughs> she brave. It's hard when your family's all telling you be quiet and you're like, you know what? I can't anymore. Like we we've, we've got to end this now. We can't keep this going on in families. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Exactly. Which is why I believe people are so vocal when they walk up to me on the street because. If this circumstance comes into your home, you know, through your television and you're sitting there with the people who are, you know, it starts a conversation. Yeah. And it, sometimes it's easier with a fictitious circumstance to talk around it rather than directly into it. But it starts the conversation about it and, and it moves the needle. And if we have done a little bit of that, we've done our job and I'm just so happy that in the place that my my faith and my craft have, have intersected that something ha something beautiful has come out of it for our viewers yeah you mentioned your own faith you have a relationship with god is does that play into grace and like when she's giving a sermon or does it help you connect to the dialogue and the script and things like that even more absolutely i i come from um a god-fearing god-loving family uh, and all steeped in the Memphis church. My dad is from Memphis, and I spent all my summers in Memphis. So I related to Grace coming home and feeling a little bit um, outside it, but still a part of it, you know? And most of the Dandridges are in ministry in some way or other, so I have great respect for the platform. I have great respect for um, what letting, letting yourself be used rather than being the... You're, you're the... Um, you're the tool. You're not. You're not the answer. Yeah. God is the answer in what He's saying. So, it, to keep me grounded in that, I, I obviously we always like to invite the Holy Spirit. We like to um, respect the space because we do shoot in an actual church, and I always bring my own Bible to the to the pulpit. So, if you see that blue leather one, I've had it since 1993. That's my study Bible. <laughs> I have to bring it on the platform every single time. So on set, is that is the spirituality important to a lot of people who are in front of and behind the camera, just keeping that honest and true? Yeah. Yes, and even if people maybe don't have that kind of spirituality, you can't mistake the movement and feel of the Holy Spirit when it comes. So, so that's not faked. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's beautiful that we get to worship a little in there too. I love that because sometimes the words are very moving as a viewer. So I would imagine being in that room you can actually feel that. You right. can take that. And our writers have, have spirituality as well so, and, and trust of us actors so that we're, we're able to riff a little bit. So if I, if I catch the spirit, <laughs> and sometimes I do, <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll go off, off message a little bit and just you know, say what the spirit's saying to me. Do you remember a scene where you caught the spirit? I want to go back and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely. You know, I haven't seen Grace's big sermon this season but that I definitely caught the spirit in that and we actually had a little praise band moment and and the the choir dancing and we did a little run in it, you know it was a it was really really it was really really great to have that but I don't know what made the edit <laughs> Well, I'm going to keep an eye out for it. Oh, okay. Uh, we have to talk about Lynn Whitfield just for Tom a second. I'm mean, Lynn Whitfield. I have to say, I interviewed Legend. her once, and she almost made me cry because she literally saw into my soul for a moment and, like, called it out and was like, mm -hmm. I felt seen. Mm -hmm. So what is it like working opposite her in these scenes that are very emotional? This mother-daughter relationship is very fraught. Mm -hmm. um, but what is it like just sharing a scene with her? She is unrelenting when searching for the truth in a scene. She will whore over it. She she studies and she will she will eke every little um, ounce of truth out of it. And sometimes out of the other actor, there have been um, wonderful scenes that we have had that 
some of my best work is because she has laid it all on the ground off camera for me. And that is the mark to me of a, of a real generous master because they know that the scene is both of us. They're, they're, so I think sometimes there can be um, a selfishness and she doesn't have that. We're, we're trying to get to the heart of it and make something really resonate, like make it hit you in the heart. And she will not let up until all of the juice is pulled out of it. And I love that about her. Because Grace and Lady Me are working on their relationship maybe this season, mm. um, were there any, uh, yeah, I don't know, for sure. That's what it's- Oh, does that amuse you? Yeah, that's what they're sort of implying is that they're gonna come to a place where they maybe deal with some of their stuff together. Yeah. Um, so did that change how you embodied Grace coming into those scenes? Because before with her mom, it was a little, you know, always mm -hmm. tense and she was very protective. Mm -hmm. Do we see more vulnerability between these two characters? I think they're a lot more vulnerable with each other. The difference is the way that they argue is a, is, the dial is turned into a more, um, oh, what's it? I don't know. It's more like this rather than, rah, rah, rah. it's more just buttery. Yeah. And, and as you can see in that scene that they, sh uh, you just showed, the grace is just like, <sighs> you know, wow. can, can we, okay. You know, it's a, it's a different kind of back and forth argument. Yeah. That is also just mothers and daughters. In exactly. General, right? Like, it's always like, it's okay, real. mom, fine. Mm -hmm. You win this time again. Mm -hmm. I'll win next time. Exactly. Probably not. I never win. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even try to win anymore. Uh -huh. It's cool. Um, there is also this uh, bigger world of mega churches, which I do love. Own was just the timing of the show was so perfect because the mega church phenomenon really has become even bigger now. Mm. Uh, what do you think is the fascination with this culture or what have you learned maybe about this culture that's been sort of interesting? Well, there is the worship experience and then when it comes becomes a, a bigger uh, platform, there is the business of it there is a business aspect of it. And in that arena, human beings exist and are vying for position. And, and we love the church, so we're taking a, a, a look at it and, and trying to peek behind the curtain on perhaps something that hasn't been um, as seen. And it resonated. <laughs> I mean, especially as we see with Bo Bridges, who's amazing. Oh, and you Bo have Bridges is a white man who's sort of pulling the strings for a black church, and it's there's all these things that I'm sure that's a reality for. Yeah, a there's lot of these there's a uh, something that Bo Bridges' character Bob Whitmore and Grace go head to head about, and it's about the camp for the young children. They have a church camp where the, um, where the brown kids can go and be brown kids, you know? And there's, a, again, an element of identity in that where they don't have to code switch or they don't have to, uh, uh, yes, exactly. They can just go and learn because, and now here's something, for Merle, and we were talking about this, have, being in Nebraska. Guys, we're from the same place. We went to the same high school. We went to the same high school, grew up in the same area. Can you and believe there it? are very few black women in this space. So. Right. Yeah, that was really special to connect on that yeah, level. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and my jaw was on the floor when you said that. I couldn't, I was like, what, what? And we deeply, we all, all of a sudden just knew each other. I was like, oh, I know you. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> exactly. 100%, and that's real, yeah. So, you know, having our families in the military, geographically displaced from their culture, um, you know, having the Dandridges in Memphis, and I have a whole other family in Korea that I'm I'm getting ready to go meet next week, searching for my identity there, going back with my mother. But there's something about knowing who you are and where you came from and what your culture is, being completely steeped in it, that gives you a sense of clarity about who you are, what your perspective is, what you're trying to say in this world, you know? And that, 
which is why I really loved that storyline because she was fighting for that. These kids deserve to have a place where they can just celebrate who they are and, and not have to um, conform at all. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she has to explain that, you know, mm -hmm. says it all because it's something that some, a lot of people take for granted. Right. And a, a huge swath of people of color kind of have to fight for that right, right. a lot. Exactly. Yeah. And she's just like, I I'm sorry, I'm not going to bend on this one. You don't want to pay for it? Fine. I got a settlement from my rear daddy. I mean, my, my, <laughs> my biological daddy. <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, representation, too, and identity, as a black and Asian actress, um, where do you feel like the dial is? Because, you know, you don't see that represented a lot in right. TV. But I know on OWN, Donnelly and Gardner is black and Chinese. Yes. So the network Sister. is, I, I see a lot of showing just how vast the black diaspora is and all the different cultures that are a part of it. Uh -huh. um, do you feel like you're seeing a little more representation in those terms or seeing yourself on camera, like growing up? Did that ever happen for you? Yeah, and I love that you are seeing, because I think growing up, having the cultures mix was, not celebrated. And now you see, you know, our superstars in tennis mixing. You see, you know, uh, myself and Dawn. It's really exciting to have a, a sister on the network that uh, I can identify with in that way, that we are owning and proud that we are both things and not apologizing it, for, apologizing for it one bit because it's, it's what created me, it's what makes the fact, I call my, my upbringing kimchi and collards. I can make you some serious kimchi, and I can get down in the kitchen too, you know, with a dandridge fish fry. So. That should be a, a restaurant or something. That sounds I amazing. I like where your head is at. What, you like that? Would you come? Well, because my mom <laughs> makes these egg rolls and we call them soul rolls. Oh, word. So we could put those on the menu. You know, that's funny because at Papillion, when, with the theater department, when, it, when everybody else was selling pies and stuff like that, my mother, to raise money for the theater department, made 500 egg rolls. And these people in Nebraska were like, what is this? What is this? And they liked it. I thought they were going to hate it. They liked it. But daggum, did I have to peel a lot of garlic and roll a bunch of egg rolls. I was like, ma, never again. We're not doing this. We are in a factory. That's so amazing, though, because it is a real steak and potatoes place. So yeah, that's right. egg rolls go a long way. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, do you look forward to playing a character, though, who gets to really explore those two worlds. Uh, that would be amazing. Because I was, I was speaking with Gina Torres recently and she's Afro-Latina and she's playing an Afro-Latina character and she was talking about how just important that is that you get to have a character who gets to explore all parts of You know, itself. I played her little sister on Suits. Yes. <laughs> Which is really exciting because I was such a fan of her. She's such yeah. an elegant, beautiful woman. Yeah. Um, but yes, being able to represent those things on screen, that's, that's a dream and we're, in an age, though, where you can create that. And that's in this period of time where I am chasing after my identity. I had this wonderful trip to South Africa right before we started um, season four where I went to Oprah's Academy. Let me tell you something. Them little girls had me clutching my pearls. I was like, my goodness, we're talking about world shakers, history makers. She is, she is raising those and they, they're going to change the entire world. They were asking me questions that challenged me and made me sit forward and say, yes, these are things that, and, you know, when, when their heritage is apartheid and, and feeling under a thumb, and, and here they are rising above all of that. And I was just really moved and really inspired by them. So... Now, you come back here and we have so many opportunities. We have so many platforms. What, what are we trying to say? What are we going to say, you know? As women of color, as um, just all of us girls, you know? We have a voice, especially in this time. And what are we gonna do with it? And those are questions that I'm asking myself. Those are questions that Grace Greenleaf is asking herself. And I hope that all of you um, young people are asking yourselves too. And that's why I think OWN continues to be a channel that I am just more and more drawn to mm. because you get to see these black families, black women, and all these different facets of life, right. all these different personalities, dealing with all these, 
you know, secrets in our community that people never want to deal with. Mm -hmm. And these shows really, Greenleaf especially, kind of attack them head on. And, yeah. and I think it heals a lot. And I know that's something that's important to Oprah as well. So, like, I just really respect the work that you guys are all doing on the Well, even what you said when you had the interview with Lynn, yeah. you felt seen. Mm -hmm. Like somebody was looking at you, seeing your situation. And I love that, I mean, the intentionality with which Oprah Winfrey put this together, that was not a mistake. She knew so many people needed to feel seen and that there would be a place for the things that they have gone through to be brought to the light so that we could discuss them and put them out front and get real with ourselves. And to be in the midst of something like that and a, and a greatness like that, that is, she's creating a huge tectonic shift in our culture. And it is an honor to be a part of it. And it's very dramatic. <laughs> oh, we're going to do drama. And it is so dramatic. We're going to do drama. So juicy and <laughs> so fun to watch. And these characters act up so much. Uh -huh. So, I, again, that balance is hard to strike, and Greenleaf really does it. So uh -huh. I cannot wait to see where season four goes. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. This see, even I, I have a hard time watching myself. And even I, I saw the first couple episodes, and I was like, <sighs> we good. <laughs> This program is good. It's a good show. <laughs> Ooh, what that girl Grace going to do now? <laughs> it's, it's really, I'm really proud of it. You should be. It's, it's an amazing show. Uh, before we go, we do have a couple of questions. Okay. The first one comes from Twitter. I am Chef Noel asks, how did you get the role as Grace? How did I get the role that as Grace? That audition process. Like. Yeah. Honestly, it was the easiest process that I have ever had. Um, I was... Um, actually, my childhood uh, youth minister was visiting me, so and I was just at home, and I got these ten pages to go in the next morning, and I was, and I can't really do anything without memorizing it. And there was something about it. I was like, can you just read this with me? I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to e even do this justice right now. But we read it, and it just she just sunk into me. She was it was just an easy like hand in hand, like, come on, girl, we're, we're in this together. It felt that way as soon as I read it. And uh, the next morning, I went and put it on tape with the casting director. I had a lovely time. And a week later, I was working on a TV show, Rosewood. And my friend Eric LaSalle was directing, and I was sitting in there with him and um, Morris Chestnut and Nicole Ari Parker, which, first of all, I was sitting there like, what am I doing here? That's a great table. What am I doing here? That's the first thing. And, and they were just all so wonderful to work with. And I got an email in my that said, Oprah would like to meet you today. Can you come to her office? So... I was like, nah, um, <laughs> can't do it. Uh, I got my little car and I drove on over to Oprah's office and we had the most lovely two hour conversation. It was also Carla Gardini who uh, produces and she also works on Queen Sugar and she's um, worked on uh, a lot of things with Harpo and our uh, writer creator, Craig Wright. And so the four of us were just sitting there and I remember it was Oprah and I on, she was sitting right here and we were on the same couch together. And I was like, this, what is, what, it, what is happening? But it just felt like being on the couch with, um, she just has a great ability to make you feel so at home and, and bring out the best in you. And we had such a wonderful conversation about what, how we feel about the church and what we wanted to say with this material. And it just felt kismet. The room just felt right. And it, it was just, it felt ordained. And that, that's the easiest, it doesn't go like that, y'all. It doesn't go like that. I, you want to talk about pinch me. It was more than that. It was like, slap me. Is this really happening? It was wonderful. And, and, and then came actually doing the part, which was terrifying. I was like, my name's at the top of the call sheet. That is terrifying. <laughs> it was really scary for me, and it took me a long time to really own that and get used to that. I just want to say, as a girl from Papillion who loves Oprah, <laughs> oh, my God. That is oh, huge. Is. That is so special. I'm so jealous. <laughs> um, one more question. Or two more. 
Hi. Hey. Um, you are such a well-rounded actor, actress, I should say, Thank a performer, you. artist. Um, I had the pleasure of seeing you on Once on This Island. You did. Yes. I love Once on This Island. I wanted, I wanted to know what your process was from going from Once on This Island to Greenleaf, going back to Once on This Island, and how that kind of affected, if at all, any of your processes with your characters, because there's uh -huh. such two different characters. Yeah, well, that's a great question. Um, the the thing about the stage, I, I come from the stage, and I was on Broadway for a good 11 years straight before I started doing TV, so that felt, that's my place of confidence, like, let me just root down and, you know, give you everything that I got, so it felt... And, and the Broadway community is home to me. So it felt really good, confident building, confidence building to come back and to create a character like that, um, playing Papa Gay, the god of death, that ha to create some empathy with it. So it was, it, it was a thrill to be the first woman to play that role, turn it on its head, and to turn it into, to bring the humanity to the villain. Um, and then... I think that informed feeling, bringing my confidence back and feeling so grounded informed going back into Greenleaf. And then I came back to Once on this Island so, with um, a new sense of, ah, oh, yeah, I did this. So I was even more confident coming back in. And then that same hiatus, I went and did my first multicam sitcom in, in Murphy Brown. So I was like, I was every corner of the earth as far as <laughs> stretching myself and using all of my all of the faculties that I have as an artist and it, it felt really good to be a little scared to feel a little on edge to, and and all of those things inform each other because it's one thing to get be with one character for four years to to step outside of it and bring new oxygen and life and vitality to it I think is a gift. So I was very I felt very glad and happy to do all of those things. Yeah. And lucky. I what a gift to be able to come back to the Broadway community here in New York City, That's center of the universe. Do you want to continue to do that is Broadway something that you would like to continue to do? Ah, I love Broadway. I mean, um being able to play Aida on the palace stage where Judy Garland was and, and being at the Schubert as um, Lady of the Lake and working with, you know, the Monty Python guys that I grew up loving and people, you know, um, I just love the stage. I, it is a temple. It is a beautiful place to be. And it is, it, it is a, um, a wonderful place for um, community. And it's a, it's a, being in an ensemble like that on stage, you carry each other all the time, every night, eight, nice, eight shows a week, and it is a different kind of, <laughs> it is a different kind of engine. Yeah. I want to see you on stage. I haven't oh, seen you yeah. on stage. There's so much good theater in New York. Just look around, see what strikes you. Right. Yeah. Okay, and right. I'll see what I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll do. <laughs> Righty, hello. Hi. So, yes, yeah, so oh, as I'm... Um, what are some of the lessons that you take away from this show and how do you apply it to your personal life as well as to your faith itself? Mm. The lessons that I take away from this show to apply to my faith and my personal life. Well, the main thing is that you, you can't run away from your past. You have to go back and dig deep and heal it. And then you can move forward with freedom and generosity and empowerment and joy in your heart because there will always be that thing that is infecting your spirit if you don't open the wound, dig it out, and heal it. You absolutely have to. And Grace did give me some courage to do some of that in my own life, and, and it's been... Um, quite quite an incredible process <laughs> not always easy but um i think uh, i think everybody can relate to that don't let your skeletons haunt you the rest of your life let them out and uh, move forward with confidence i told you grace is brave yeah thank she you. is i mean those are hard lessons to learn and actually apply yeah. to your to your life so yeah. it is uh, I think healing for a lot of people to witness it every week and then they have to look at themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that's real. Speaking of, the show premieres tonight. Tonight, y'all. <laughs> I cannot wait. We've been off the air for a little while. Thank you. It is it Obviously, is we cannot wait. 
It is a thrill to have it back on the air, and you will not be disappointed. 10, 9 Central tonight. Come on with it. You heard it, guys. Season 4 of Greenleaf premieres tonight on OWN at 10, 9 Central. Put your hands together for Merle Dandridge.